I'm standing just in front of Edenville Dam. You can see it over my shoulder here. And I hope you guys are enjoying the new Google Earth uh, studio animations that are in the beginning of these videos. And I also wanna thank my patrons, Kirk and Julie, and for people sending me letters through the mail. Uh, if you wanna send me anything, I will pop my PO box up on the screen right now. It's also in the description down below as well as my Patreon and PayPal account. I really appreciate everyone and their support of this channel. It really helps a lot and allows me to keep doing what I'm doing here. Let me turn the camera around here now and we'll focus a little bit more on Edenville Dam. Uh, you might notice I'm not actually on site today. I did not get permission to actually access the site where the work is going on, but we're standing just on the other side here. This is where the water is kind of going through where the embankment used to be. The embankment used to be right across here, right where these electrical poles are. Uh, that is no longer there. And now the water is following the new river path that exits just down this direction and we have Edenville Dam right here. There's been a lot of people that have actually been watching the day-to-day -day activities here uh, ongoing at the dam from my live cameras. I have a live camera just downstream here and then I also have one just up this direction as well. So if you wanna see that, make sure you go check that out. Links in the description for that down below as well. But if you don't wanna wait for me to do updates both here and on the Tobacco River and as well as on the Sanford Dam, you can tune into those every day to actually see a real-time video of what is going on here. You may see a few differences here from the last time I was filming. There's a new kind of access road. They put riprap all along here, right in front of the dam. This is for the future work that's going to be happening, as well as they put this uh, debris chain around here. So that boom is kind of to keep any debris from going over that direction. I hope the next time that I'm out here, I actually get permission to be on site and be able to film in a little more detail of what's happening on here because there's a lot of work happening just on the other side of this dam. We will be able to see a lot of this from my drone. That's a, a fortunate fact. And as well as over there on the Tobacco River Dam, I'm gonna be leaving here and going to film over there on that dam right after here. Uh, but again, I don't have access to that site today. So hopefully the next time I'm out here, we're able to kind of film and document this just for historical purposes as to what's happening here. It is a little bit of a disappointment to me because there are a lot of events happening here. We can see the off-road truck moving back and forth here. Uh, I, I am kind of disappointed that I'm not able to go over there and document that today. But on to a happier point. Uh, yesterday, we actually spent the day volunteering down in Sanford, kind of cleaning up an area that had a lot of debris rubble in it. So that was kind of nice uh, to return back to the community. A little bit of uh, hard work and effort put into cleaning that area up a little bit more. And I mentioned that I am filming at the Tobacco River today. Uh, that will be a separate video though. Probably work on editing that, maybe get it out midweek. If not, then it will be uh, next weekend as well. So just a broad overview of what is going on here. Again, we'll be able to see a lot more of this from the drone, but they installed a haul access road here. Uh, they installed this road down here as well. And this is future work to be able to install a coffer dam here. So they're gonna put a coffer dam right here. They'll be able to bring excavator out here now with all this riprap down. Hopefully you can hear me, it's pretty windy out right now. But that excavator is going to start hammering down some sheet pile. So sheet pile cut off wall all along inside of here. So they, they can work on lowering the Edenville spillway here. Once that Edenville spillway is lowered, then they will be able to fill in the new river path happening over this way. That's where all this dirt is actually going from. They're actually digging it out just on the other side of the dam here and hauling it and filling in where a lot of that water washed away a lot of the sediment over there. And that's someone else's property. So they actually talked to him and kind of figured out what he wanted to do. So they're filling in that new river path. And once that is filled in, they will be able to redirect the water flow back over the top of Edenville Dam. We're gonna jump into some of the drone video now. I'm flying towards the west. Uh, we can see right here in the center of the screen is the new river path where the Edenville earthen embankment failed over a year ago. You can see the cranes near the top of the screen. Those are over at the Tobacco River Dam. Uh, so that will be an upcoming update happening very soon, but they were actually lowering a coffer dam into place over there. Uh, now as I circle around the front of Edenville Dam, we can see a lot of that work that's happening, a lot of that riprap that has been installed right in front of the dam. Uh, the drone is actually facing to the south now. We'll start flying that direction a little bit further. 
see the off-road truck coming over here on this side of the screen in the excavator down here digging directly behind Edenville Dam. So right where he's sitting right now actually used to be the old river path. So that water used to flow over the top of Edenville Dam spillways and down the river here in this location. Kind of looks like uh, there's a nice roadway that they have. I don't know if you'd call it too nice um, with this off-road dump truck goes down around the roundabout there, turns around, and then can be loaded by the excavator. So we'll watch a little bit of that work happening here. Looks like they are clearing uh, a lot of the uh, old sediment. So this is kind of actually nice that when the water flow is restored back over the top of the dam, uh, the water level here will be a little bit deeper. I'm sure a lot of the sediment actually came from the earthen embankment when it failed. So be nice to get that back out of there, um, especially when Wixom Lake is refilled again. So it looks like they're trying to kind of just take the center portion right now. We can see some of the uh, barrels up at the top of the screen as well. Those used to block off the river so that boats would not get too close to the backside of Edenville Dam. So there's one concrete pillar that is still mounted over there on that side, and there's another concrete pillar on the other side of this river. We'll see that vantage point with the drone later on. I'm going to go ahead and pivot around the excavator as he loads this off-road dump truck here now, though. This is the same Hyundai excavator that was um, down river. Uh, removing the plug that actually joined the old river path to the new river path. So they were able to complete that work and now we're able to drain out all of that water from this area. So just last week this was completely all underwater yet about six feet deep. So now that that is all drained away they're able to go ahead remove a little bit more of the sediment and in a little while here I will actually show you where they are depositing and dumping the sediment that they're removing right now. So we have a second off-road dump truck coming down the road right here right now. It is just big enough for both of these dump trucks to barely squeeze past one another. We'll see as he gets a little bit closer. He actually has to go on some of the stonework on the far side to be able to get past there. So. This excavator must have a pretty large bucket on it. It was able to fill up this off-road dump truck and I don't know, I wasn't timing it, but probably pretty close to a minute. Now that he's almost full and ready to start hauling this down the road, we'll be able to see a little bit of that and actually get a sneak peek at the backside of this dam, how the water flow, how deep it looks behind the dam there, um, as well as the water situation over there. So... Kind of going around the side, we could see right behind the powerhouse, it looks like the deepest point. You can see that they uh, have a pretty good system going on here, though, as one off-road dump truck leaves. The other one is ready to take on another load as well. So he goes right to filling him up, and this one can head to the dump site. But back to looking at the backside of Edenville Dam, they got the concrete portion uh, scraped off that was right behind the sill. So that looks all nice and clean, and it looks like they also got the stagnant water that was trapped between the sill and the spillways out of there. Maybe cleaned up that area a little bit further as well. Um, this haul road was just constructed last week after they removed the plug as well. So a lot of gravel, a lot of grading work, and we are kind of going to go right over here to the right hand side. Up at the very top of the screen, we can see the substation, Consumers Energy substation right there. And they have a little bit of a road down here to the new river path as well. That's the one that sometimes Fisher Contracting is able to use. Over here on the bottom right, you can see a, a little bit of the uh, field where they're dumping that. That may actually all be all the sediment from the area where they removed the plug. And this fence right here where it stops where they're crossing through is actually the property line where the Four Lakes Task Force in Midland County no longer owns. So this is a, a different guy's property and they're in charge of kind of restoring this back to what it used to be. So kind of bringing in all this fill, bringing it back up to the elevation where it used to be and going to be filling in the New River Path. 
Just missed it, on the bottom left of the screen was the Edenville Falls. We'll get a little bit better view. Right now, I was just kind of focused on watching where this off-road dump truck went, though. He pretty much went here to the end of the pile, backed up, and dumped the load right there. Kind of see where all the earth was scoured when the uh, earthen embankment failed and washed all the sediment all the way down to clay in this area. Clay is our bedrock here in Michigan, so we don't actually have a physical uh, rock bedrock. Uh, our bedrock is considered clay, so it does uh, run off a little bit and actually uh, get into the water. That's probably why our water is so turbid again right now. You can see over here on the left-hand side the new river path, and up on the right-hand corner is the old river path. So the channel right here at the top of the screen is where I was filming last week. This is where Fisher Contracting went ahead and dug a channel through the plug, and that allowed the old river path to drain. So all that stagnant water that was trapped behind the dam was now allowed to kind of flow downriver. So this area right here at the top of the screen, I'll start tilting the camera up. We are facing towards the south though, and you can see how all the trees are just completely leveled. This is also due to the Edenville Dam failure. So when all that water came rushing through here, you can see it definitely just took a straight line path and leveled all the trees in its way. Uh, that was M30 Bridge up at the top of the screen as well. I'm gonna go ahead, tilt the camera over here to the right, and we'll take a closer look at the old river path, how much water is still left in here, and how much water is drained out. So. I'd say not going out there, but just estimating from the drone, uh, at least six feet was probably drained in this area, probably five to six feet. So the amount of water still left in this area is probably left than, less than a foot. And we can actually see a guy right here in the center of the screen that was walking down the river channel. I'm not sure uh, what he was really doing, but they did have a couple biologists out there when I was uh, filming and they were kind of evaluating the area towards the north. Um, right here on the center of the screen looks like a little bit of a launch that was kind of manufactured. I think this is when, uh, right after the dams failed, this was their way to be able to access the old river path with a boat. So they made that little makeshift launch. And you can kind of see the area that they are removing the sediment. It's quite a, a large area right here behind the dam. There is a bulldozer coming up this road. If you can call it a road, um, it's pretty deep underwater here, but... It's the roadway that they made to be able to access and remove the sediment. So again, we can see the barrels over on the right-hand side attached to that cement abutment. And over on the left-hand corner of the screen, we can see the other cement abutment that those used to be attached to to block off the uh, river path here so that people couldn't get up behind the backside of the dam. So here comes another off-road dump truck ready for another load. There was a seawall over there on the left-hand side. Not sure where that was from, but I'm sure it was probably right up here behind the backside of the dam that got washed away as well when the earthen embankment failed. This dirt that they're taking out of there, uh, they're making good use out of it though. They're over there filling in the new river path with it, and also it is increasing the depth when the water is redirected over the top of Edenville Dam. So they're kind of removing it before that uh, progress starts. After the water is flowing back over the top of the Edenville Dam when the spillway is lowered, uh, they won't be able to get in here again and remove the sediment. So might as well do it now while it's somewhat dry since they drained this area right here behind the old river path. Looks like the bulldozer was just kind of on a road work duty, making sure that the roadways were pretty well maintained for the off-road dump trucks. Uh, this one must have been a little bit too close to kind of squeeze by there. Had to stop for a little while. I'm going to fly up a little bit closer to the dam this time and we'll take a look at what's happening there and on the north side of it. Got to be really careful in this area though because you can see the three uh, power lines. Those ones are pretty easy to see but the higher up lines are a little bit more narrow and that one line is pretty hard to see when you're flying the drone. But going over the top of Edenville Dam right now, like I said, we can see that it is pretty deep right behind the powerhouse. Looks like there's actually a tree stuck down in there. And we can see how nice and cleaned off that they have the area right behind the sill, that cement portion. And the area between the sill and the spillway has all been drained. Um, 
Looks like they may have tried to clean that up a little bit. And over here on the right is the new hall road that they put in. So this is the road that will be used to bring out the excavator and be able to kind of drive down that new sheet pile cutoff wall. I'm not sure what these bags are right here in the middle of the screen. I'm not sure if they're kind of like a sandbag to protect uh, that bank or if they're for future work. Uh, maybe they contain the actual metal for the seawall. We will have to wait and see. These vehicles, I think, right here were actually the uh, biologist or people with the DNR that were out there evaluating the river path upriver of the Edenville Dam here. And the boat is actually Fisher Contracting's boat. So they put a nice uh, driveway of riprap right here in front of the Edenville Dam. So like I said, now this excavator can come out here pretty easily and hammer down the steel sheet pile cutoff wall in front of Edenville Dam, so then they can go ahead, lower those spillways right there in front of the screen, and not have to worry about the water draining that's in front of them right now. So they can go ahead, pump all that water out of there, and go ahead and lower those spillways. They will look uh, just like on the Tobacco River side, they will be that simple um, step spillway. And we'll be able to see this from my live camera. We have an excellent view at the back side of the dam from my live camera that's downriver here. So make sure you're checking that out. I do want to mention real quick though, if you made it this far through this video, I will be also posting the raw video footage from the drone at the end of this video. So if you want to see that, make sure you stay tuned to the very end, as well as if you've watched this long, make sure you are subscribing and hitting that like button. It helps get this video out there in front of more people. And a lot of people have been really watching what's been happening here. There was a little bit of delay to actually getting work started here, uh, kind of in that spring time frame. A lot of that was due to permitting issues. So a lot of people lost interest. Now we got to get this out there in front of more people again so that we can bring them back in to knowing what's happening here, Edenville Sanford, Secord, Smallwood, and that they are engaged with this process. Again, there's only 40% of you guys watching that are actually subscribed, and there's been a lot of new subscribers, and I really appreciate it. But let's see if we can get the other 60% over to subscribing to the channel. If we do, you know, that's just that many more eyes that will be able to see what's happening here. And there's a huge benefit that when I post new videos, if you click that bell icon, you will get notified right away when I'm posting these new videos. I'm always staying up to date with what's happening here and always filming the most recent topics. So if you wanna make sure you're getting the most recent updates and news, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon as well. Jumping back into some of this drone video, we're flying towards the south. So right here in front of Edenville Dam again, you can definitely see where the new river path is going over here uh, through the opening in the Edenville earthen embankment. And we'll follow down this direction a little bit further, see what progress they're making with the dump trucks. Also was kind of seeing uh, what the bulldozer was doing down here at this time. So I figured he would maybe get up there and start leveling off a little bit of this. Uh, I want to call them tailings, but uh, I guess tailings are referencing what I'm watching with Gold Rush a lot of times. Um, and these are more so just dumping uh, fill dirt. He went ahead and dumped another load right there. Now over here on the left hand side of the screen, we got a great shot of Edenville Falls. So like I said, um, there wasn't a lot of water going over these right now. So not as uh, rapid as they were the last time I was out here when the plug was being removed from the old river path. Taking a look at the bulldozer now, he was just kind of leveling off a little bit of the dirt in the roadway. And I think that's all he did. He really just kind of went down here, maybe got rid of a few of the holes that the off-road dump trucks were making in the roadway. There's a lot of this raw footage at the end of the video. Again, I went ahead and watched the bulldozer for a little while. Uh, this is actually a great shot up at 400 feet in altitude, though. We can kind of see the entire site. We can see all the riprap they dumped in front of Edenville Dam. The excavator back there loading the off-road dump truck. The bulldozer now back here uh, leveling off the roadway a little bit further. And the second off-road dump truck after just dumping a load is now coming back to be refilled again. You can also get a nice look downriver at the old river path and the new river path. And you can actually pinpoint Edenville Falls in the top left corner of the screen. 
There's been a lot of people that have been asking what equipment I'm using. Um, I'm filming this on a GoPro Hero 9. The drone I fly is a DJI Mavic Pro 2. So that's that information. If you want to know any of the other details, uh, that's also in the description down below. And those are also links to Amazon. Anything you buy from Amazon, they actually kick back a portion of the proceeds to the channel. So that's another way to help out. Um, and it doesn't actually have to be the item that I'm linked to. After you click that link, if you purchase anything on Amazon within 24 hours, they kick a small portion back to the channel. And that is very helpful because a lot of people think, oh, you get rich off YouTube. Not the case. Uh, the amount of money I'm making pays for my gas, but definitely nowhere near getting rich. I can nowhere near do this full time, so it's a good thing that I have a full time job. Uh, so that's a little bit more information. Not all YouTubers are rich and can live off YouTube. I'm actually going to turn the camera around and show you guys a little bit more here while I'm heading back up to the truck to head over to the Tobacco River Dam. So like I said, I am not on the site. The site work is happening over here. There goes a off-road truck. They have this area all fenced off where the site work is ongoing here. So I am staying on this side of the fence. Water level out here is actually pretty low right now. You know, normally you could see it would maybe be up another foot, possibly two foot but this is a river so it fluctuates with how much rain and water flow we're getting through here uh, we haven't got a lot of rain this week about two weeks ago we did have a large amount of rainfall though so that's kind of why things are a little bit low right now but this kind of the area here of where the embankment failed and there was all this water from Wixom Lake drained right through here so it's kind of interesting to actually stand here maybe can see kind of scale of how big Edenville Dam is out there. Uh, the lake wasn't too deep, probably not over 30 feet, maybe averaged about 20 feet. And of course the deepest area was right here in the center of the river path. A lot of trees sticking up out here yet. This used to be an entire forest before they went ahead and installed the dam here. After the dam was installed, this area flooded also could be called a reservoir. I know a lot of people out in California call these reservoirs. We use them interchangeably here. But yeah, this area flooded. You might actually notice how all the trees are the exact same height. And the reason that is that I've been told is they came out here during the winter time after this was Wixom Lake. It had flooded and topped all those trees. So that is the reason why they are all the same height. Definitely an interesting area just over that way is the Tobacco River Dam. And that's the Tobacco River over there, about a half a mile away. Uh, that's where the water used to be flowing over here from the Tobacco River, meeting up at the confluence. This used to be the confluence uh, where it met up with the Edenville Dam and then went through the new river path over here where the embankment failed. Now that the Tobacco River spillway has been lowered, that water was redirected back over the Tobacco River and now it's kind of cut off. Tobacco River's over there going over the Tobacco River Dam. And on this side, we have the Titabawassee River going or soon to be going over top of the Edenville Dam. This used to be kind of a rapid area when the water was flowing over from that direction though. So that's kind of a little bit of the background backstory to this area. On my way back to the truck, I just figured I would show you kind of this view uh, right where the Edenville embankment used to be. Right up here, you can see the sand and it spanned from there all the way to the sand over there right next to the dam. Uh, here goes one of those off-road trucks hauling that dirt down there and filling in the new river path. You can maybe see where that new dirt has been poured there or dumped, as you would say. Um, but as I'm kind of heading up this way, I just wanted to show you guys how much the trees have grown here. This is a little deceiving where I'm standing at right now. They're not actually that tall uh, from the top of where I'm standing here. That's probably 20 feet, um, but there's a ledge in here. So I'll jump up there and kind of show you what it looks like in there. Still some wheat in here, all sorts of crops that had came from upriver when things failed. But here we can kind of see where this bank is. And look, when you look in here, just a lot of little new growth, a lot of cottonwood trees growing in here. These are already probably about an inch in diameter, but from ground height here to the top of them, I'd say they are about eight to 10 feet tall. So that's kind of just an update on the vegetation growth on the lake bed. Couple willow trees in here as well. Here's some willows. 
Here's the view from the kind of ledge area, a high vantage point. That ledge kind of runs right along here. The steam shovel that Michael removed was right there where you can see that sand at. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you go back. I have a whole playlist dedicated to the steam shovel removal and restoration. Very interesting story that the steam shovel was found left and abandoned here in the bottom of Wixom Lake. After the water was drained, it appeared. Michael took ownership of it and is now restoring this 100-year-old steam shovel. It was digging right here along the sand embankment, digging sand, and that was transported over here to make the earthen embankment of Edenville Dam. All right, done rambling now. Now we'll go ahead and see some of that aerial drone footage. As I'm walking back to the truck, kind of walking over this riprap, uh, kind of precariously perched, I'm watching my step. I don't usually wear flip-flops when I'm filming, but today I am because I didn't have access to the sites and if I needed to cross some place that had a decent amount of water over it, a stream or something, I was gonna wear flip-flops so that I did not have to get my feet wet. But like back to what I was saying, is there's been a lot of people that do not like my white frame sunglasses. Kind of a staple on the channel now that you either love them or hate them apparently because there's a lot of people that wait for me to see these white frame sunglasses on Sunday. You know what? If you are one of the people that do not like these white frame sunglasses, feel free to send me another pair of your choosing of any sunglasses that you like to my P.O. box in the description down below. Maybe pop it back up on the screen as well. But you send me a new pair. Maybe I like them. Maybe I'll start wearing them. So that's uh, kind of an ultimatum for you guys. I almost tripped back there, but now I'm almost back to the truck. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I did get out there and film this one really quick and do a little bit quicker edit on it than I usually do as well. So may have left a few of the details and quality on the editing out than I usually do, but I wanted to make sure that I got this out Sunday so that I didn't miss a week and you guys were actually able to see what's been happening here because I'm sure a lot of you have been watching on the live cameras and wondering what's happening on the day-to-day -day activities and what they're actually trying to accomplish, where all this dirt is coming from and where it is moving to. So we're going to jump into some of this raw video footage here now. And if you don't feel like watching that, feel free to tune out. But if you do, thanks for watching.
Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.